uh, if there is not uh, any other uh, question about this talk, I think we can uh, move to uh, um, discussion. So I think we can spend the next uh, few minutes sort of having a broad discussion uh, about both of the talks or also the talks of yesterday if uh, um, there is an interest in, in that. So if uh, anyone wants to comment, I think Mercedes said, uh, wanted to say something. Yes, as people think about comments, I like to, to, to relate the two talks today in some broad speculation. A little bit following uh, uh, yesterday, we had some speculation, so why not today? Um, the, we saw two systems in which the dissimilarity it has to be related uh, at some scales uh, to some form of uh, negative frequency dependence that forms niches. That is where we get what, what Daniel called over dispersion. And ultimately, and we also saw yesterday this very interesting remark that the strain variation was very important to the interactions that had to do with coexistence in the pitcher communities. So of course, today we, the talks were at different scales of organization, uh, competition of strains within species, and, uh, and essentially uh, interactions between species in a forest. Whether we want to make the distinctions or not, what we have is these systems in which ecology and evolution has to set some form of balancing selection through ecological interactions to allow very high diversity. There is no other mechanism. And I don't mean specific mechanisms, whatever they are, they don't need to be just competition. Uh, they have to set up some form of uh, uh, advantage of the, the rare disadvantage of the common. And this brings us, I guess, to the analogy between the talks, which would be like, what sets, what sets the diversity of the pool, whether it's the local pool or the regional pool. I think the two are very connected in a meta community or meta population concept. So I guess what the second talk was saying is that any mechanism that relies on this negative frequency dependent selection over long evolutionary time should, should have this threshold. What would mean that if we go from this very particular case of the VAR genes to, to the genes that encode traits, the traits that underlie the uh, what you call over dispersion? Uh, no, yes, over dispersion. I get confused between over and under dispersion. But I guess if we think of those traits, right, and the size, if we want to build a very diverse system, we will need a very diverse pool. There is in the in the variation of the traits, not just the number of traits, but the variation, the genetic and phenotypic variation of the traits. And we are saying that the intensity of interactions, which is the intensity of transmission in our system, basically influences uh, crossing a threshold below which you can no longer build essentially the pieces, the essential pieces to build the phenotypes with which we, you interact. So you wouldn't know because the demographic threshold is much farther. This is not a demographic uh, problem with uh, extinction. This is a problem in building and assembling high diversity. And I would love to think about whether, for example, in a forest system, the frequency dependent that is Johnson Connell type with natural enemies such as insects may live in a very high space of variation. And if we push the system to interact too little, so if we reduce biomass or we reduce area, we reduce species, we are not just losing species, we are losing the pieces, the genetic variation that allows us to build a hyperdiverse system. That's the analogy. Maybe, maybe it doesn't work, but, uh, but I actually think uh, it should. And that's the, that's the connection there. And many questions about how you connect the within species variation to the between and the role of uh, those levels of diversity. 
Yeah, I don't know if Dan uh, wants to comment, but I don't want to push anyone. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I mean, I think Mercedes, that's, that's a great point. And I think leads back to one of the other questions about the role of, of phylogeny, because I think, um, you know, if, if you have systems that have very little intraspecific variation, then presumably they're going to be more prone toward to species level sort of pruning of, of these species in these systems. Um, and it's a bit of a challenge where we impute traits like I did, because we don't actually know what the true underlying interspecific variation is in these systems. But presumably that, that must be a huge part of what links trait diversity to species diversity. Um, you know, in these systems, if, if you imagine you have a, a range of phenotypes of different traits, and they have to have some minimum separation in trait space to survive, you know, or there's, there's some mechanism pushing them far apart then you can presumably pack in way more species in these systems and still be able to satisfy this minimum criteria of you know, minimal species similarity um, in systems where you have really high intraspecific variation. And presumably that is to some extent what, what's happening in the tropics or something like that, where in these systems, you know, you see three or four or 500 different species in, in the same region compared to six or seven in the boreal forests. Um, but I also wonder if there's some it, it, I don't really know the theory behind this, but maybe someone else here does, but I would imagine in more optimal conditions, there's more options for, for phenotypic variation than you otherwise might have in really stressful conditions. Um, you know, if you think of like cacti or something in deserts, they have to have really, really strong, clear set of traits. Um, and I wonder if the neutrality in some systems allows um, phenotypes to sort of fluctuate more randomly, which then makes them able to survive a little bit in these systems. Um, but it's a really cool thing. And I think as anyone who studies interspecific variation, it's really hard to link that also to interspecific variation, unless you're really going to measure all these things individually. Yes. Any, anyone else want to, to comment or to add uh, uh, something? So, um, well, I think uh, also in the interest of time, we can uh, uh, move on. And uh, so thank uh, Shishin and Dan for the, for the talks. So what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna take a break of uh, uh, 10 minutes.